If you have opted for the NBN network, most likely you have heard that you will be getting a FTTP connection. Let's go through a quick tutorial which will answer most of your questions on what FTTP is. FTTP stands for Fiber to the Premise and it connects your home to the NBN network. Before we get into the details of FTTP, let us quickly do a comparison between the other fiber broadband access technologies. The technologies differ with each other based on the length of fiber that runs towards the customer premises. In the image, we can see that FTTN or fiber to the node reaches out the least towards the customer premise. It is followed by FTTDP which stands for fiber to the distribution point and FTTB or fiber to the building. FTTP on the other hand uses only fiber and no metallic cables and is capable of carrying extremely high data speeds due to the availability of enormous bandwidth compared to the limited bandwidth offered by copper cables. Now let us take a look at the FTTP network architecture and see how it works. We have the central office on one end and the customer premises at the other extreme end. The fiber distribution hub is connected to the central office by distribution cables. The FDH and the access terminal remains connected by distribution cables. Lastly, drop cables connect the access terminal to the customer premises. If you choose the NBN network, your service provider will install a NBN utility box outside your home. A fiber will connect it with the fiber wall outlet located inside the house, which is then connected to the NBN connection box. Using an Ethernet cable, the NBN connection box is connected to a compatible router which can be used to connect user and devices like laptops or VOIP phones. Customers can also opt for a battery backup kit which can provide up to two hours of service in case of a blackout. You can also see rectangular boxes along suburban areas as shown in the image on the left. These are termed as the Fiber Distribution Hub or the FDH. It is used to connect fiber optic cables and passive optical splitters and also serves as a testing point in the network. On the right is an example of how a typical network aggregation switch looks like. These are typically found in the central office and is used to combine all the connections and provides a path to be connected to the core network. Lastly, we are going to discuss some fault detection techniques used in fiber optic networks. In the first section, we have an optical power meter with a laser light source. Since optical fiber works on the principle of total internal reflection, light traveling from one end must travel through the fiber and can be seen on the other end. If not, there must be some issues with the fiber. Using the optical power meter, we can check whether the traverse light meets the required minimum specifications for optimum network performance. The optical time domain reflectometer as seen on the lower left corner is a device that helps to locate the position of a fault in the fiber along its length. When a fiber is broken at any point, light gets scattered back to the source. The OTDR measures the distance of the fault from the source of the fiber and gives an estimate where splicing can be done. Here are a few practice questions that you must try to answer from this tutorial. You will find all the answers in this tutorial itself. Hope you got to learn the basics of FTTP networks from this video. 
Thank you for watching.